Welcome aboard the Bitcoin Express. My name is Chase. Let's get to it. In this video, we're going to go over what the SHA-256 hashing algorithm is, and we're going to try to keep it very, very simple and easy to understand. So what is a hashing function? It is a function that takes a set of values, numbers, or letters, and turns it into a fixed output length of numbers. So I'm gonna show you an example of this. Let's say I use SHA-256, which is the hashing algorithm used in Bitcoin. I take the data, this is a hash function, and I hash it. So with SHA-256, I'm always going to get a 64 character output. It's always going to be the same output length. It doesn't matter if I put in one word, five words, a thousand words, it's going to come out with 64 characters. And it doesn't have to just be letters, it could be numbers too. So if I do this is a hash, hash function 20 and I hash it, you'll see I get a new hash function. Now the crazy thing about hash functions, or I guess a very interesting thing about them, is for them to be secure, they need to be quick and they need to also be unique. Every hash function needs to have a new output. If I go into this hash function, right, and I take this n, that's lowercase, and I just make it a uppercase, you would think we'll have the same output, but we get a totally different output length. And what's the reason that we use hash functions? In cryptography, it's used for security. It's used so you can take information, you could take data, you could take numbers, and you can transmit it, you can send it, and keep it secure, and prevent it from being tampered with. And in Bitcoin's case, we're not writing, you know, these big essays. We don't have a lot of sentences or words. We're taking transactions that occur on the blockchain and we're hashing them into these 256 length bits or it'll be 64 characters on the output. And a, to show you how this works, or maybe give you another example, let's say you have an essay of five pages or 20 or 30 pages. Instead of transmitting those 30 pages to someone, you just give them a number, let's say number 357. So as long as they have that number, you know, they know that there's that paper with 30, you know, 30 pages, but you don't have to send and disclose all of that information. An even better example that I really like to use is the example of a coat check. When you go and you use a coat check, the person working behind the desk, they take your coat and they know exactly what you have. Maybe a brown jacket, there's gloves in the pocket, there's a scarf, Maybe there's some other things in the pocket and they give you a number. Let's say they give you number 22. So the person behind the counter knows exactly what's in the coat, what's in the pockets, and they also know the number that corresponds to it, number 22. Now, when they give you that number 22 coat check ticket, you go out and if you give it to a random person, you say, hey, here's number 22, all they're going to know is that there's a coat in the coat check. By holding this paper, that says 22, the person will have no idea what color your coat is, if there's a scarf, if there's gloves in it, what's in the pockets. All they know is that there is a coat there. And this is similar to a hash function. So the hash only lets us know that there is transactions, there is data. But when we go, I guess from the beginning part, we know what's in the data and we give out the hash, just like the coat check person gives out the, tick the ticket. I hope I explained that one. And a very important thing about a secure hash function is that it's pre-image resistance, meaning that you can't take the output and find out what's in the input. This would be the example of someone taking that ticket 22 of the code check, giving it to a random person, and that person will take that ticket and there's no way they'll ever know what jacket it corresponds to or what's in the jacket or what's the color. So same thing, when you have a hash in a hashing function, and in this case, SHA-256, it should be pre-image resistance, meaning you can't take that output and figure out what's, what the input is. And you might be wondering, why? Why SHA-256? Well, that's a good question. There's actually so many different hashing functions. Let's say I type in the word hello and I hash it. This calculator shows me a whole different classes and families of hashing algorithms. And as you can see, the chart is very large. Even within the SHA family, the SHA-1, SHA-2, which is what SHA-256 is part of, and SHA-3. So there are so many different families of hash functions. So why did Bitcoin choose to use SHA-256? 
The reason is because at this date in time, it is very secure. Over the history, if you can see this chart on the screen in front of me, there have been many different hash functions. And when they first came out, they were considered strong. And then over time, there were some minor weaknesses. Eventually, they became broken. And if you can see on the screen red boxes, that means that collisions were found. Now, what is a collision? A collision is when two different inputs have the same output. So let me show you what I mean by that. If we take using SHA-256, hello world, and we hash it, we get our output of fixed length. Now, if we take hello world and we change it to hello planet and we hash it, if we get the same exact hash that we got with hello world, this is a collision. So we can never have two different outputs having the same output. But it's, it's so unlikely. You know, if I actually hash this, we're going to get a, a new hash. It is infeasible that you have two inputs that ever have the same output. And I say infeasible because it is not impossible. It could happen, but the likelihood is so low. So a secure hashing function needs to be pre-image resistant, and it also needs to be collision resistant. And as I mentioned, it's so low, it's, it's basically impossible. And the reason is, is because the probability is two to the 256 power. And as humans, we don't really understand, it's so hard for us to grasp how big of a number this is. Usually when we talk about large numbers, we, in general, we don't understand how large it is. And I'm gonna show you some mind blowing examples of the power of numbers, how big they are, and how as humans we have this, I guess, uh, inability to truly understand how big it is. So let's take a deck of cards, 52 cards. So it is likely that no one in the history of the world has ever held the same exact arrangement of cards after a shuffle. So again, it's not impossible, but it is very, very, very unlikely. There are, quote, more ways to arrange a deck of cards than there are atoms on Earth. Let me just explain this to you again. It is almost impossible, unlikely, that you have ever shuffled a deck of cards and after the shuffle, there was ever another deck of cards in the history of time that had the same exact arrangement. It's just mind blowing. And another example I wanna show you of how crazy numbers are and how we underestimate how large they are. I'm gonna ask you a question. How many days are in one million seconds? If you can see the screen in front of me, you can see a million seconds equals 11 days. Now let me ask you, how many days are a billion seconds. So not a million, but a billion seconds. How many days? I'll give you one second to think about it. The answer is it's not days, it's 31 years. Okay, so a billion seconds equals 31 years. All right, how many seconds is a trillion years? Right, I'll give you one second to think about it. You ready? This is mind blowing. A trillion seconds is 31,709 years. So you can see the difference from a million to a billion, to a trillion, how, how large, how big, how great the difference is. Now coming back to the collision resistance with SHA-256. So again, we can't have two outputs, two inputs equal the same output. And the probability is two to the 256 power. And this makes the chances of a collision happening one in over 115, I can't even say this, Quattro Vigentillion, one hundred and one in one hundred and fifteen Quattro Vigentillion. It's just a massive number. It again, it's not impossible, but in our time, you know, in our time, in our kids' time, and our and their kids, and their kids, and our great grandchildren, and our great 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 grandchildren, it is highly unlikely that we ever will have a collision. But coming back to this chart of hashing functions over the years, if in 50 years from now, if 100 years from now, we find out that, two, that SHA-256 is not as secure as we thought, then just like we had in history, we will find an improvement and in the future, we will use a more secure and safer hashing algorithm. If you have any questions on hashing algorithms or SHA-256, put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer it as soon as possible. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.